In today's video, I'm going to discuss about the danger of garlic in chronic kidney disease stage 5 in stage renal disease. If you want to know why garlic is dangerous in chronic kidney disease stage 5, please stay tuned to the end because I'm going to talk about it. Without wasting your time, let us begin. Okay, garlic has been widely used for culinary as seasoning due to its pungent flavor. It has been known to have a diverse chemoprotective health benefits and has been traditionally used worldwide over the centuries. For thousand years, garlic has been known for its medicinal properties to treat gastrointestinal issues, skin diseases, high blood pressure, parasitic infection, respiratory infection, and many other ailments including cancer. To date, there are more than 6,000 studies has been published for its health benefits. The components of garlic, the biological active organosulfur compounds present in the garlic that are responsible for most of the chemoprotective effect are all of these except allicin. Now, allicin is one of the major components of garlic. However, this compound is very unstable. Once you smash or chop the garlic, it will disappear and can never reach to your bloodstream or in the urine. Uh, so therefore, allicin is not directly responsible for most of the medical properties of garlic. But allicin has been proven to interact with our microbiota to reduce the productions of trimethyl N-oxide or TMAO, which is a biomarker for cardiovascular disease. The biological active organosulfur compounds present in, in the garlics are responsible for most of these medicinal properties. Now the number one property is antibacterial. It has been proven to cure um, and kill ESBL E. coli or extended beta lactamase, an E. coli strain which is a multi-drug resistant. It is also proven to kill Pseudomonas infection from the wounds. So garlic has an antibacterial properties. The second, it has some antiviral properties. Although the study for antiviral properties are, are very limited, but it has been proven to knock down most of the cold symptoms and the flu. It can kill influenza virus. Antifungal properties, it can kill, yeah, it can also treat yeast infections and can kill aspergillosis. Anthelmintic properties, anti-parasitic infection properties so it can kill worms antioxidant because garlic can also stimulate the NRF2 pathway which eventually can produce glothathione which is responsible for fighting the reactive oxygen species or fight against oxidative stress so garlic has an antioxidant property next it has also an anti-obesity it has been studied that garlic has also has an anti-obesity property garlic has been proven to to cut the cycle of cancer formation and kill the cancer cells so it has an anti-cancer property it also reduced the oxidative stress reduce oxidative stress by activation of the nrf2 pathway which produce glutathione and fight against oxidative stress. It has been proven to reduce an endoplasmic reticulum stress in the intestinal epithelial cells. Another properties is it can reduce insulin resistance. So it has um, diabetic properties, anti-diabetic properties. It has also a cholesterol lowering effect. It has also known to have an immunomodulatory so it will regulate 
some immune response and it also modulate the production of cytokines the pro-inflammatory cytokines so garlic has also an anti-inflammatory properties so now what I'm concerned here is although we know there's a lot of benefits there's a lot of medicinal chemoprotective benefits of garlic we have to be very careful with the side effects the side effects are bleeding if you're taking warfarin garlic can cause bleeding so you must not take garlic where you have warfarin it can cause anemia and it can also co decrease serum proteins now the other side effects that I'm concerned is the decrease in calcium why because garlic has a high phosphorus content garlic has a high phosphorus content when you are injured kidney when you have an end stage kidney disease your putocyte the final filter as uh, your putocyte the specialized epithelial cells of your glomerular filtration process is damaged and it, the the hem homeostasis are lost causing uh, retention of phosphorus so there will be an increased level of phosphorus in the, your blood causing a reduction in calcium causing a reduction in calcium this reduction in calcium will send signal to your parathyroid hormones to increase and the parathyroid hormones will send signal so every time the parathyroid hormone sends signal a calcium is released and this calcium could be deposited more likely could be deposited to the artery through your arterial wall causing cardiovascular disease causing atherosclerosis eventually to cardiovascular disease and it's time calcium is removed from your bones or teeth your your bones are weakening causing bone disease so these are the side effects of of uh, garlic must be taken with caution you must you can take garlic to, to to get the health benefit but at the same time you must watch your phosphorus level any slight increase in phosphorus level causing a reduction in calcium and your parathyroid hormones increase there is a, a sign of vascular calcification a calcium will be deposited to art artery causing a calcium plate and eventually over a decade it can cause cardiovascular disease or bone disease so so you can still take garlic but you must check your blood small increase in phosphorus and a reduction in calcium with an increase in parathyroid hormone this cycle can cause a calcium plaques deposit to your artery causing atherosclerosis and eventually to cardiovascular disease and at the same time calcium is removed from your bones causing a weakening of your bones and uh, can have some bone disease problems okay in summary i believe medical benefits of taking garlic as a natural remedy for for variety of illnesses outweighs its negative effect to our human body but this negative effect must be monitored closely and must be taken with extra caution to avoid major complications which is heart disease and bone disease thank you